Hello! In this video I'm going to talk about an antenna that I designed for multiple input, multiple output, ultra wideband applications. It's uh, defined to work in 2.4 to 5.0 GHz range with a return loss better than minus 6 dB. In this video I'm going to talk about the theory behind ultra wideband and the technology behind it and in the next video we're gonna go over the steps that I've done in CST Design Studio so you can know exactly how I've made this antenna. Let's go! Conventional radio technologies such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that send signals continuously, ultra wideband sends signals as pulses, and it sends thousands of small short duration pulses over a very wide bandwidth. And this is how it can achieve the improvements in capacity. And also it makes it extremely useful for localization of objects such as car keys or tags attached to any object. When one ultra-wideband object comes in close proximity to another ultra-wideband object, it starts ranging and measuring time of flight. And uh, this measurement tells you the distance between the objects. So by doing that, it can determine the position of objects down to 1 mm accuracy located up to 200 meters away from the object. So ultra-wideband is a short-range wireless communication protocol which is aiming at replacing Bluetooth for basically similar applications. Unfortunately, it hasn't picked up for communications yet because different companies have been slow at releasing their APIs uh, for software development, which makes it really difficult to design your own uh, communication using ultra wideband. However, it has been picked up by companies for location tracking, which is a really awesome feature in uh, modern iPhones and it can do Apple tags and all things like that. Those are devices that use ultra wideband. However, in a typical smartphone, you would want more than just ultra wideband signals. You will want your 5G, you would want your 2.4 gigahertz for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You will have all those things. So what you really want is an antenna that can support all of this and it can have such a high bandwidth that it can be used for a variety of different applications. So this is basically the idea behind the design that I present here. To have an all-in-one antenna that can uh, do all those different things. And we also use multiple input, multiple output technology because it gives a substantial benefit in capacity. Bigger the number of antennas, the bigger the capacity improvement. So we explored the 8x8 MIMO setup, but obviously you don't have to go this far. For a typical smartphone you can have 4x4 MIMO or 2x2 MIMO. It is the technology that's only been used recently uh, in the last 5 years or so in the smartphones. And the, basically the idea is to have multiple antennas at different sides of the smartphone, which will all pick up signal independently and uh, sum it up in the coding. Another aspect that must be mentioned is that 5G signals have different frequencies in different countries. And in this figure here you can see just how wide the differences are. So we can have different bands from 3.5 to 5.0 GHz and different regions. So really you want your smartphone to be compatible with all of them. So the antenna must have a good return loss performance for all of those bands. And this makes the design of the smartphone antenna especially challenging. So the big idea of this design is to incorporate your radiating antenna pad or a patch into the ground plane. Uh, so it's somewhat in the middle and therefore it acts as a resonating pad for low frequencies but at the same time it acts as a ground and this allows to have a lot of empty space on the other side where you can put your electronic components and so on and here you only have a simple small dipole antenna which is um, engaging uh, the radiating pad at the bottom and um, you, I'm going to show you S11 
and S21 results below. And when I say S11, this means the return loss of the antenna. And the return loss tells us how well the antenna radiates at a particular frequency and uh, how well it perceives and how well it transmits the signal at this frequency. So this is one characteristic of antenna and the other characteristic is S21 and this is called mutual coupling between antenna elements. This means measuring interference from one antenna to the another. So we want to measure mutual coupling between antenna elements neighboring in this direction and also neighboring in that direction. For 5G and uh, wireless personal area networks, it's really important to have a mutual coupling less than 15 dB. And uh, we can see that this antenna achieves that. So as a final step, we will typically go and measure all those parameters in an echoic chamber, which is something that we have done at the University of Surrey. And we confirm that the antenna performs as expected. So in summary, this design provides a multiple input, multiple output antenna for smartphone applications covering bandwidth from 2.4 to 5.0 GHz. It features the return loss of better than 6 dB and mutual coupling better than 15 dB across the range. In the next video, I will show you exactly how I made this design in CST Design Studio. Please stay tuned and see you soon!